What we also need to think about is, uh, okay, you've got a small device with a small beam of light going here. It's bouncing all around the room. It's coming in from a different angle in different parts of your body. But certainly most concentrated in terms of most energy con yeah. at, the, at, the, at the point source. But you cannot assume that the point source is the only source of that long wavelength light if you're in a confined in, in confined space. Well, let's um, use that as an opportunity to talk about a related study, and then we'll circle back to the yeah. uh, the uh, let's call it the the light passing through the body yeah. study, um, because the study I'm about to mention I think is going to be so interesting to people, um, and a little bit shocking, and very very cool <laughs> because it's actionable, uh, which is you did a study showing that. Even if you illuminate just a small portion of the skin with long wavelength light, it changes the blood glucose response. Literally, blood sugar response is altered by shining red light on the skin. Hmm. And for years, there were these, let's call them um, uh, corners of the internet that would say things like, oh, you know, when you eat out of doors, it has a different effect on your body than when you eat indoors. Yeah. But there are too many variables there, right? Because when you eat out of doors, typically it's at a picnic and then you have greenery and they're socializing. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and no one's going to fund a proper study to look at, you know, to parse every variable in a picnic versus an indoor cafeteria. No. And, it's, and it's not worth the taxpayer dollars, frankly. You did the right study, which was to shine light on, what was it, the back? It was on a small area of the back, yeah. And, and I must make it very clear, first of all, the person whose idea this was was my, my colleague, Mike Powner. And, um, and Mike's thought processes were very, very clear. We were on a long drive to do some research well out of London. And that's a great time for, because it's the, the journey starts at five in the morning, the, the, it's a great time for gossip. It's a great time for wild ideas, for streams of consciousness, which sometimes are very important in science. And it was Mike who said to me, you know, if we make mitochondria work harder, then they need glucose and they need oxygen. So pause while Glenn, who's driving, kind of has to catch up on this idea, 